Magandang araw, Malacanang Press Corps. Ngayon ay makakasama na po natin si Press Secretary Trixie Cruz Angeles at uh, Finance Secretary Benjamin Chocno. Secretary Angeles, the floor is yours. Magandang hapon. Uh, I-announce lang po natin Proclamation Number 2. Declaring Saturday, the 9th of July, a regular holiday throughout the country in observance of Eid al-Adha, or the Feast of the Sacrifice. Okay, this is issued for the President by the Executive Secretary. Um, to reiterate, another batch of newly appointed officials had taken their oath before the President yesterday. Uh, to reiterate, Secretary Amina Pangandaman, uh, Secretary of the Budget, of Budget and Management, uh, President and General Manager of GSIS, Jose Arnulfo Veloso, Chairperson and Chief Executive of the Film Development Council, Tirso Cruz III, Chairperson of Philippine Charity Sweepstakes Office, Juni Kua, Ambassador and Permanent Representative of the Philippines to the United Nations, Antonio Manuel Lagdameo. COO, Tourism Infrastructure and Enterprise Zone Authority, Mark Lapid. Deputy Commissioner for Operations, Bureau of Internal Revenue, Lomio Lumagi, Jr. Board Member, Movie and Television Review and Classification Board, Juan Levilla. Philippine Ambassador to the United States, Jose Manuel de Moales. Administrator of the Southern Philippines Development Authority, Abdul Ghani Salapudin. And Presidential Security Group Commander and Senior Military Assistant, Lamon Sagala. Some of you had inquired about the topics that were discussed at yesterday's cabinet meeting. Uh, the DOF discussed the medium term fiscal framework some details of which the Secretary can clarify for you today. Uh, the depart under the Department of Agriculture, the President discussed ensuring the country's food security and reconstructing the value chain, starting with research and development to provide farmers with the latest uh, te technology. The DOTR discussed providing support to the transportation sector and ensuring, ensuring sustainability through the Liebling Sakai program. They discussed fuel subsidy program and the service contracting program. The DEPED discussed measures to ensure the safe reopening of face-to-face -face classes. And the DICT discussed the Philippine digitalization situation and they addressed digital inequalities and low digital competencies. So the details of which should be discussed by the cabinet members themselves, they will hold their own, they will make their own releases or uh, will address you directly at the later date. So we just uh, discussed with you the topics so you're aware of what happened at the cabinet meeting yesterday. Now in relation to the president's uh, remarks and uh, his manifestations before the media right after the cabinet meeting, we have uh, Secretary Ben Jokno of the Department of Finance to expound and to clarify some matters that the President had discussed yesterday. Ladies and gentlemen, the Secretary of Finance. Good afternoon. So let me begin by saying that the President's disbelief at the 6.1% June 2022 inflation rate figure was misunderstood. Okay. He was referring to it as a full year figure when in fact the year to date, meaning January to June, average inflation rate is actually 4.4%. Okay. So that's what he was in mind, 4.4%. Okay. In practice, the BSP projects the monthly inflation rate a few days before the official announcement. The inflation rate of 6.1% for June 2022 is within the BSP's forecast range of 57 to 6.5% for the month. And from January to June 2022, as I earlier mentioned, the average inflation rate of 4.4% 
is still within the development budget coordination committee's target of 3.7 to 4.7 percent for the year as of May 24th, 2022. The uptick in the June 2022 inflation rate was contributed by the following. Operation of personal transport equipment, meaning the use of cars, etc., electricity, gas, and other fuels, and meat and other parts of slaughtered land animals. Now, the distribution of the first tranche of fuel subsidies worth 6,500 pesos for public utility vehicle operators and drivers is expected to be completed in the first week of July. This is the Duterte subsidy scheme, the 6,500. Now, considering that oil prices are expected to remain elevated in the near term, the government will expedite the release of the second tranche of subsidies for the transport sector. In other words, President Marcos will continue the fuel subsidy that was put in place by the former President Duterte. This will be funded from the windfall tax from fuel oil. The President was correct in saying that the current high inflation experience is global. Among our peers, Indonesia's overall inflation climbed to 4.4% in June from 3.6% in May. Meanwhile, Thailand's inflation, inflation rate increased to 7.7% in June from 7.1% in May. Inflation in the Euro, Eurozone, which includes Germany, Italy, Spain, Italy, etc., stood at 8.6% in June the highest in 11, 11 years. And meanwhile, in the U.S., inflation rate reached a 40-year high of 8.6%. Rest assured, the recent acceleration of inflation will be arrested by the government through addressing constraints in the food, energy, and transportation and logistics sectors. Thank you. I'm now ready to answer your questions. Thank you, Secretary Drogno. Ang una pong magtatanong ay si Sam Medinilia ng Business Mirror. Ang tanong po niya, what measures will the government be implementing to curb inflation, which has already hit 6.1% in June? What kind of relief will the government provide to cushion the impact of rising consumer prices? So as I said, uh, inflation is uh, driven mainly by the elevated world price of oil. Okay? It affected the whole world. Okay? Now, uh, the, the measure that we will do is we will continue the uh, grant of the fuel subsidy to the affected parties, right? like the drivers, the farmers, and the fisher folks. Okay? The other measure is that we will continue the importation of products which are in short supply. Okay? as has been done before. And of course, we will try to improve the transportation and logistics sectors. Another question, sir, from uh, Sam Medinilia. Given the latest inflation data, what are the new inflation and GDP growth rate projections of the government for this year? The, uh, okay, to be, uh, to be accurate, the inflation targets or forecasts are done by the DSP, not, not, not by the national government. And we estimate that inflation will remain elevated for the next few months so that the annual average inflation for this year will be in the neighborhood of 5%. It will be down to 4.2% next year. That's the average inflation. And it will be back to the range, the, our target range of 22 to 4% it will be back to 3.3% by 2024, okay? Uh, this is a problem faced by many countries. It, you cannot cut inflation overnight. It has to be gradual. 
and so that that's the uh, forecast of the BSP. Okay. Thank you. So it's a uh, five, four point two, and three point three. Okay. Thank you, Secretary. Next, uh, from uh, Neil Mercado of Inquire.net. His question, po, ay, uh, how much of a concern is limited fiscal space? When you talk of fiscal space, you talk of uh, the size of the deficit, okay? Size of the deficit. Uh, I think we still have a lot of fiscal space because we are confident that uh, our revenues will pick up. In fact, uh, yesterday we submitted what is called the medium term fiscal consolidation uh, framework, okay? Uh, fiscal medium term fiscal framework that is from 2023 to 2028 that's the six year term of the president this is presented for the first time okay so we want to show the world that we are we are conscious of uh, having a sound fiscal management so among the among the uh, uh, targets in that framework are the following we expect the economy to grow by 6.5 to 7.5 this year. Okay? In fact, this is going to be the highest, the consensus is this will be the highest growth rate among all ASEAN plus three countries this year and next year. Okay? Uh, that's the consensus. When I say ASEAN plus three, that plus three means Japan, South Korea and China, China, okay? So we are, the Philippines is expected to have the highest growth rate for the next two years. Okay? And then it will be followed by a growth rate of 6.5 to 8% from year 2023 to year 2028. Now, our we're not only concerned with growth per se, we're also concerned with reducing poverty, okay? So our target is that by the end of President Marcus's term, poverty incidence will be down to single digit, 9%, okay? Uh, if I remember right, it started at around 25% during the Duterte's first year in office. But it was, we were almost down to around 18, 17%, then the pandemic hit us, okay? So that there's a there's a uh, slight backsliding, but our target under this framework is that poverty rate will be down to nine percent by 2028. Our target on the national government deficit to GDP ratio will be three percent, starting uh, 2026, 27, 28. Now on the debt, national debt, and you keep harping on this, 60%, that's the target. It will be down to 60% by 2025, okay? Right now it's around 63%. So it will be slowly tapering off to 60% by 2025. And that on the build, build, build program, we are committed to spend some five to 6% of GDP for infrastructure annually between 2023 to 2028, okay? As you know, during the last 50 years before Duterte, the spending on infrastructure was only less than 2%, okay? And finally, we want to achieve what is called an upper middle income status. So that means that we are shooting for a $4,046 per capita income for Filipinos by the end of the president's term. So those are the main target of this uh, medium term fiscal framework. I cannot talk uh, in more details because this is supposed to be the, the president's, uh, he will present this during his SONA and there he will spell out the specifics on this, okay? Secretary, uh, maybe it's the same, pero uh, another question from uh, Neil <coughs> Mercado. When do you plan to release your fiscal consolidation plan? Well, uh, we have discussed it yesterday in the, in the cabinet, and it was approved. Uh, this framework, as I said, will, will, will set the tone 
or will be our uh, say game plan for the next six years. And I said, this is the first time that this government or any government of the Philippines has presented such a game plan, okay? So we're not only thinking of a one-year plan, but it's a six-year plan on the budget. And the, the desire is to uh, reduce the deficit which ballooned during the pandemic to around 9%, deficit to GDP ratio to around 3% by uh, 2025 or 2026. Okay, Secretary, ang susunod pong magtatanong ay si Letner Siso ng DZRH. Ang, kanyang, ang tanong po niya, Secretary, sinabi ni PBBM na hahanapan ng pondo para maipagpatuloy ang subsidy sa transport sector. Mayroon na po bang tinitingnan o pinag-aaralan ng gobyerno kung saan maaaring kumuha ng dagdag pondo para magamit dito? Ma mar mayroon ng pagkukunan. Yun, sinabi ko kanina, yung windfall tax, Kasi because uh, nakaset naman yung, val, yung specific tax on petroleum products, since tumaas yung presyo ng gasolina in the world market, tapos nag-depreciate ng konti yung pe peso, so the peso value of the, our imports has increased, so magkakaroon tayo ng additional revenue as a result of that. No? Doon natin kukunin yun. Yung pagtaas ng presyo ng gasolina, ibabalik natin sa taong bayan in the form of uh, targeted subsidy. Hindi lahat makakakuha, but uh, yung mga mas apektado sila makakakuha nito. Okay. Secretary, may tentative na raw po kaya kung magkano ito? Hindi, papatuloy lang natin yung 6,500 kasi mag-expire na yun itong June eh. So yung sinabi nila, this will be uh, completed by the first week of July. Yung pa yung kid President Duterte. So we will continue. Okay. okay. Ang susunod pong magtatanong ay si Rex Mamisho ng CNN Philippines. Uh, hi, Sec. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, clarify ko lang, no? So, tiba tinigil yung uh, libreng sakay sa MRT. Um, was it too much ba for government coffers to subsidize um, M MRT free rides? Hindi ko alam na tin tinigil na ba yan? Yes, according. Since when? Since when? Uh, July 1. July 1. Okay. Uh, hindi ko alam kung magkano ang nawala dun sa atin, but I, I know that we, ha we have rehabilitated MRT. As you know, on schedule na siya ngayon, di ba? Hindi na si Sira, on schedule. And then, I siguro dapat naman uh, magbayad na yung taong bayan dun. But meron siyang pinaplano ngayon na if you're a student, lilibre na ata yung, kaya lang LRT2 ata yun, ano? At might, maybe we might consider it also for the all the mass transit system. I don't have the estimate right now. Pero malaking improvement na yung MRT, I eh, know. No? Nakikita ko talagang regular na yung pagdating na. Tsaka mas madami na isang karo ngayon, di ba? Hindi na sa nasisira. Okay? Okay, salamat, Secretary Jokno. At ngayon naman po mga katanungan para kay Secretary Angeles, Maricel Halili ng TV5. Okay, sayo. Tapos na ako. Hello, sir. Uh, Kailat Yansel of Business World here, sir. Sir, my question will be, okay, sir, uh, will the DOF push for the completion of the comprehensive tax reform program? Is a taxation of profitable digital transactions outside the tax net among the priorities of the new admin? And what sectors will benefit the most from the new fiscal tango, sir? Uh, yung, ano, yung tax on digital uh, uh, services, I think it's only fair na dapat itatax natin yun, hindi ba? Kasi, uh, kasi kung if you were going to buy it from the regular stores, nagtatax ka, Eh, bakit naman pagka digital, hindi ka magta-tax, no? di ba? I think in the sense of fairness, dapat, pare, dapat magkaroon ng tax. Especially, medyo, if you really think about it, yung mga nakakaangat ang siya nakakakuha ng mga ganyan, digital payment. So, in the, in the, on the basis of fairness, I think they should be taxed. No? Now, on the remaining uh, parts of the comprehensive tax reform program na pinus ng Duterte administration, there are two remaining packages. Uh, you, I think uh, uh, ang estimate noon is that it's supposed to be revenue neutral. No? Walang additional revenues na makukuha doon. But it will simplify a lot the tax system. So we will push for that uh, and then we expect that to be approved before the end of the year and it will be implemented next year. Sir, last question, sir. How to cut government spending? Uh, is the DOF considering a shift to PPP, sir? Is, is it supporting a shift to, to PPP, sir? Public-private partnerships? Ah, PPP. In terms of infra development, sir. Oh, we will push for PPP. Okay. Uh, kaya naman hindi siya na push nung time ni Duterte is that when we came in, I'm talking of President Duterte, 
walang available na mga projects na ready for implementation. Now we are able to develop some 88 or 89 major projects ready to, to go, shovel ready na yun. So if there are some private sector interest, we will welcome that. No? And also because we recently approved yung tinatawag na Public Services Act, which means 100% control of foreigners of some, some industry like telco, uh, tollways, uh, shipping, etc. I think uh, we, uh, we encourage them to come in okay, in, and uh, maybe choose some of those projects or develop their own, and we will welcome the PPP arrangement, not only at the national level, but also at the local level. I see there are some local governments, some cities, who have the money to enter into this kind of arrangement. This will help us uh, reduce the, uh, rather enlarge yung tinatawag na fiscal space. So sa talip na 100% gagastos ang gobyerno, I think only a fraction of their off will be spent by the government for projects that will benefit the Filipino people. Okay? Yes? Sir, on power hike lang po, mayroon pong uh, Supreme Court ruling uh, allowing Meralco to implement a staggered power rate hike Napag-usapan po ba ito sa during cabinet meeting or sa meeting na PBBM with the economic team? Ano po kanya naging directives? What are the measures to be implemented by the government para naman po maibsan yung mga burden na, na, na hinaharap ngayon ng mga consumers? Okay, I'll be frank with you. Wala ako sa cabinet meeting kahapon, okay? So, absent ako. So, Pa, alam, hindi ko alam po, hindi pinag-usapan yun. Ha? Hindi pinag-usapan yun. Ha? How about sir, sa ek, ano, economic team, ano yung magiging hindi plan Hindi namin napag-usapan. But, but I think uh, kailangan yung manggagaling yung dapat siguro sa Department of Energy. Unfortunately, wala pa kami Secretary for Energy. Okay? So hindi napag-usapan yan. Okay? So. Okay, just to wrap up, Alexis Romero of uh, Philstar. Uh, clarification for Secretary. No? Yung 6.5 to 7.5 growth, it's also for 2023? The for 2023, six, mas mataas pa, 6.5 ah. to 8 percent. Ah, okay. Mas ambisyoso kami kasi, ah, okay. marami kami, kasi maraming bagong reforma eh. Mas I think we can, we can, uh, so yung 6.5 to 7.5 this year, palagay ko medyo conservative pa nga yun eh. Remember, the first quarter is 13.2. No? Second quarter, I would think, will be even higher than the 13.2. Why? Because remember, nagkaroon tayo ng, ng surge noong January 2002, eh, di ba? 2022 pala. Nagkaroon tayo ng surge sa COVID. Eh. So, two months lang yun, ha, yung 13.2. So, mas malakas pa yung, I, I guess, no? as a former governor of the Central Bank, ang forecast ko mga, mga around. Sec, dahil nabanggit niyo na rin yung surge, no? yung economic team, ba will they be adapting the same stance ng Duterte government na na hindi na tayo mag, mag wide reaching lockdown. I think no grand, country now will except maybe China will will go into uh, general lockdowns, no. Talagang ano lang focus more more focus and I think we have now graduated from being pandemic to endemic. We have to live with the virus. And kasi most of us are vaccinated anyway, right? Some of our even uh, bo have boosters, no third and fourth booster. So the economic team does not prefer mm, you in general. In fact, that is also key to the 100% opening of the, or face-to-face -face opening of classes. No? Um, the, the plan is it will start opening up by, by the August, by August, and then 100% by November. Thank okay. you, Sek. Thank you so much, uh, Secretary Jokno. Now we go back to Maricel Halili for uh, Secretary Pwede na ako, ha? Okay, thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hi, ma'am. Magandang hapon po. Ma'am, uh, first uh, issue po yung tungkol sa proposal. Uh, uh, a congressman filed the bill before the Congress uh, seeking to change the name of Nino Aquino International Airport to Ferdinand E. Marcos International Airport. Ano po ang tingin ng Malacanang dito, ma'am? Uh, Malacanang has no comment yet on this one. It's just been filed after all. Wala pang first reading. So, any reaction would be premature if any is even warranted at this time. But, ma'am, do you think this is a, a timely topic to discuss considering that, well, there's a lot of challenges that the administration is facing right now. Number one is the uh, increase on uh, mm -hmm. prices of commodities. So is this a timely issue to be raised? 
Well, this is not a bill filed by Malacanang, so it's not our place to indicate whether it is timely or not. It was the congressman who filed it. So no comment for, for right now. Particularly, you know, it's it's very early stages, really. It's just been filed. Ma'am, sorry. One. Yes. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Other issue lang po, baka po may detalye na tayo dun sa meeting ni President Bongbong Marcos with DOH and Phil Health officials this morning. Uh, wala pa po. Wala pa. We will probably be calling for briefer as soon as we get that. So get ready probably tomorrow, not sure, or we will be issuing a release for it. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Okay, okay one yes. more. Ang susunod naman pong magtatanong mm -hmm. ay si Pia Gutierrez ng uh, ABS-CBN. Where is Miss Pia? Hi, ma'am. Actually, na tanong na yung mga questions ko. But um, okay. could you please clarify po the appointment of Tercio Cruz the third as uh, ah, FBCP yes. chair, considering na uh, meron pong previous release before that the appointment of uh, uh, Yusek Dino uh, has been uh, extended until 2025. I think she would fall under MC1, so memorandum circular number one, and therefore the appointment is correct. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Okay, no more questions. Thank you. Oh, okay, fine. Vance, one, one pahabol. After the lady. Ba, so dalawa yung pahapal natin. Vance Fernandez. All right. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Good afternoon. Uh, as the president has announced the free rides for students in the LRT will continue forward. Has there any been details announced on where the appropriate budget for sustaining the free ride operation for students will be drawn from? And how long will the free rides be maintained by the government for? Well, this is a question for the DOTR. Let's allow them to make the announcement themselves. This was a, a proposal that was made during the cabinet meeting. The president uh, seems to, uh, as he has announced, support it. So let's wait for the DOTR. All right. They'll, okay, they'll, make the, they'll make their presentation. Okay, thank you. Mabilis lang na, tanong lang po. Ano po ang tugon ng Pangulo sa ng European Union for the President to visit Brussels? Has it been formally acknowledged? Not yet. It was not, in fact, discussed during the Cabinet meeting. So we'll wait for that one. He did acknowledge the other invitations. If you will recall, he, we just haven't calendared the, the invitation of China. So... We'll wait for that one. Wala pa talagang acknowledgement. We'll, it wasn't even discussed. We'll, we'll announce it as soon as it's formal. All right. Thank you very Ma much. Just, uh, for oh. last follow-up question. <laughs> Nestor Corrales of uh, Inquiry. Tatlun. Good afternoon, ma'am. Ma'am, there are over a dozen bills pending before the Office of the President for the President signing, particularly mm. the vape bill. What's the plan of the President? The Will vape bill... Vape. Ah, all right. The plan of the president on these bills, will he sign it or will he let it lapse into law? The president has not indicated either way. So when you say that there are bills pending before the president, as you know, if no action is made, then it lapses into law. So there has been no indication that the president has not commented on these bills right now. <laughs> Magkakaroon po ng National Vaccination Day for school children uh, considering na may plano tayo mag-face-to-face classes 100% sa November. Meron po bang planong gano'n? The issue of vaccinations actually has been addressed during the cabinet meeting. It will be discussed formally later on. In fact, uh, we have a release for tomorrow on that one. Uh, yeah, and you're right. It is an essential part of returning to face-to-face -face classes. So we'll discuss this further when uh, the, we're expecting the Department of Education to issue their department order pursuant to face-to-face -face classes and uh, an additional uh, announcement also from the DOH on the vaccination program. Right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. All right, Totoo Mahabol Totoo Mahabol na. Na. Wow, really? 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 Okay, ganito. Just as a matter of discipline, let's just take two more questions. All right? Madam. Okay, last, last two questions from Rex Remisio and uh, Pia Gutierrez. All right. um, SEC, this is related to defense, no? So, yung Republic Act 11709 uh, sets fixed terms for top AFP positions for three to four years. Kasi dati, di ba, pag na-appoint, uh, hanggang sa retirement. Pero this time, fixed term, three years na. 
So si President Marcos ba is uh, will he continue to keep uh, current AFP chief uh, General Andres Centino until he retires on February 2023? This is a law, right? And it's been passed. So the president adheres to the law. Mm -hmm. So so siya pa rin ba until February 2023? Whatever is stated in the law. So if his term has been during the time of the effectivity of the law, then the president will abide by that. And last na, yung papalit sa kanya by February 2023, which will take the three-year term, meron na bang list si President Marcos? Oh, it's way too far right now. So really, really speculative at the moment. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, I would just like to get your comment po dun siya. Naging tweet ni Senator Francis Escudero, Cheese Escudero, regarding the President's veto of House Bill 7575. Uh, he questioned, um, he said that he is uncertain if the President can veto a bill passed by the previous Congress. Can Malacan yung comment on this one? Um, the Constitution is very clear that they have no indication as to whether it's the sitting President or the former president who can sign a, a bill into law. So since there is no distinction made in the Constitution, neither do we make such a distinction. So the president can veto. That is the stand. Thank All you. Right? Thank, Thank you, you very Malaming much. Salamat. Malaking salamat. Malaming salamat po, Secretary. Thank you. Have a good day, guys.